In this video, which is the idea of systems of differential equations and how they might look and be structured in ways we might be able to solve them. So the next object we want to consider here is the idea of a system of differential equations. The main idea here is we have a system. If there are multiple quantities that are changing and interacting with each other over time, and we want to see how they change together as things flow forward. So multiple things changing lead us to systems. And this is a pretty common thing to think about because it's really hard in nature and physical arrangements to have exactly one thing that is changing and moving. So possible ways this might come about are things like predator-prey dynamics. If we have multiple species in the wild, one's a predator, one's the prey, as one's population changes, the other will have to change to sort of compensate for it. If the prey population goes down really low, then the predators will have enough food and their population will grow at a slower rate, and vice versa. You'd also see a problem with multiple tanks. If I have two tanks of water with different quantities of salt in them and water flowing between the two tanks, I now have two changing quantities. I have to model both of them together to get the overall result what's going to happen here. Another example is something like chemical reactor systems or just rate kinetics. Right, The rate of a reaction depends on the amount that's there, but if I have a multi-step process, it's going to depend on the concentration of all the different quantities in this reactor is going to determine the rate at which this goes forward. We need to model all those together and sort of model these whole process going together in time, and that's where system comes about. You can talk about systems of any order or any number of components. But as we'll see, as both of these increase, things get more and more complicated. So we're going to spend a lot of our time focused on first order systems because this will be the simplest case that we can look at here. So the idea of a first order system is that only the first derivative shows up in the system of equations but we can have multiple functions involved here. So for instance, if I have two unknown functions, we'll call them x and y, the first order system might look like the derivative of x with respect to time is some function f of t, x, and y, and the derivative of y with respect to t is a function g of t, x, and y. We can also think about these in a vector form where we think of, say, the vector v as a function of t to be stacking x of t and y of t on top of each other, then we can rewrite this as the derivative of v equals some function capital F of t and the vector v, where f, we may say a vector on it, is the function given by f of t and v g of t and v. We can use vectors to sort of stack all this together. And if you think about this, if you ignore all the vector notation, this here looks a lot like our first order equations in general. Right? We have a derivative on one side equals some function f of the independent variable t and the function itself v. So this looks like our first order equations from before, and that's the model we have for our first order systems. In more generality, I can have n functions or n components, and I'll have each one looking like the derivative of x1 with respect to t is some function f1 of t x1 up through xn, and on down the line. Up to dxn dt is the function fn of t x1 up through xn, and again, we tend to like to stack these in vectors because it makes all of it look very similar and much the same. I can write this as the vector x prime equaling some function capital F of t and x, where again f is the stacking f1 all the way up to fn. Now that's great and all, and again for general equations there's not much hope to really solve them out. So we want to again clarify ourselves down to a linear first order system. We'll actually see that we can use the ideas from first order linear systems to help us analyze any first order system. We need to start with our basis for linear systems like we started with linear equations before, and then we can build up into how to deal with nonlinear systems as well. So what happens if this system is linear? Let's look back at the two variable case. So I had my dx dt equals some function f of t, x, and y. Now if this is linear, 
It means the x and y only appear on their own to the first power. They're not multiplied by each other. They're no weird functions. So I can rewrite this as some function a of t times x plus a function b of t times y and then plus what I'm going to call f1 of t over here. Right? If it's linear, it's of that form. And similarly, dy dt, which was g of t, x, and y, I know also can be written as some function c of t times x plus d of t times y plus some function f2 of t. Great, there is general linear first order system. What happens if I put this in vector form? So in vector form, I'm going to replace x by x1 and y by x2. So I'll have something like dx1 dt equals a of t times x1 plus b of t times x2 plus f1 of t and dx2 dt is c of t x1 plus d of t x2 plus f2 of t and I can rewrite this in a nicer way. Right, this here is my vector x prime that's combining these two equations here. But I know the first component should be a of t x1 plus b of t x2, so let's write that as a vector. a of t x1 plus b of t x2. I'll leave that separate from the f1 of t that I'll sit over here because that doesn't depend on x at all. And the second row, I will have a c of t x1 plus d of t x2 and f2 of t. But there's one more simplification we can make. And so I can write this expression here in terms of matrix multiplication. So I can write this as x prime equals the matrix a of t, b of t, c of t, d of t times the vector x1, x2, and then tack on this f1 of t, f2 of t. And this here's our vector x all over again. So I end up with, in this linear form, something like x prime equals a matrix a of t times x plus a vector f of this non-homogeneous part here. So again, it comes back to looking a lot like our first order linear equations if you ignore the fact that there's vectors and matrices going on. So basically the point is we can see how looking at systems of differential equations, especially linear ones, matrices pop out as natural things to consider. If we have a nice linear equation, this sort of coefficient matrix, this a of t here, just pops out. If we take a constant coefficient equation, then this a of t is a constant. And then it's a single matrix that we can try to analyze to see maybe somehow this matrix will help us figure out how to handle this problem. That's something I'll have to look into and work out what that can tell us. But maybe this matrix means something and can help us figure out, is there a way to analyze and solve these linear systems? Because we're down to now analyzing a matrix. Maybe that helps us. So that's the idea of systems differential equations and how they can be written both in just equation form one by one, as well as in vector form, or in the case of linear equations in a matrix form as well, where there's this matrix involved, this AFT that pops out, multiplying the original solution vector for these equations.